Saw you casting an eye at Sally after gym class. You should ask her out. Oh, uh, I don't have the guts. Well, sure you do. Ah. If you don't call her, I will. Gee, I suppose. Welcome to I Survived Demoic Acid. This is a story that revolves around two individuals. It revolves around Dennis and Sally. Oh, sweet Sally. Sally here is a smart and gifted college student. She's incredibly educated in the field of demoic acid. Uh, are you doing anything tonight? No, why, Dennis? Well, uh, I was wondering if you'd like to go to dinner. This man, or shall I say boy, knows nothing about demoic acid and nothing about the opposite sex. Six sounds good, Dennis. Boy, that's awful keen. Bye. But beware, Dennis. Demoic acid can kill you and your loved ones at any moment. Luckily, the poison has been studied by scholars around the world for thousands and thousands of years. I'm Clarissa Anderson, and I'm a scientific researcher currently working at University of California, Santa Cruz, and I study phytoplankton ecology, and most specifically, harmful algal blooms. Demoic acid is itself is an amino-like amino acid, and it highly resembles an amino acid that we need in our bodies as vertebrates, which is glutamic acid. And so what we call it is, is a neurotransmitter agonist because it tends to bind to the same sites that glutamic acid would bind to, and these are very important neurologically. And if we interfere with that, if domoic acid interferes with those sites by binding to the ones where glutamate or glutamic acid should be binding to, we end up with neurological disorder. When we eat shellfish that have been in the presence of a pseudonychia bloom that has produced domoic acid, they filter that, those cells out of the water and they accumulate the demoic acid. We go to a restaurant, we buy shellfish, we buy mussels, we buy oysters, we eat those oysters and we end up with high concentrations of demoic acid in our system if the bloom was large enough and that's because of this ability to retain the demoic acid in the uh, flesh of the shellfish. And the reason we call it amnesic shellfish poisoning is because some of the long-term and short-term effects are your loss of short-term memory. In animals such as sea lions, dolphins, all sorts of cetaceans, and seabirds, the effects are also neurological, but we refer to it as demoic acid poisoning, and the effects can be anything from seizures to respiratory failure to death. I think when we talk about mitigating um, a natural event like a demoic acid event, it becomes tricky territory because we don't want to start tampering with the ecosystem because we don't know what, what that tampering will lead to. We could end up with a far worse situation than we had when we started. So I think the, the more tempered solution that a lot of scientists are coming to now is really the idea of predicting when these blooms happen so that we can not only warn aquaculturalists and um, restaurants who might serve shellfish, but we can also warn the people who are going to be the first responders to any kind of event like this when it comes to its effects on sea lions and other marine mammals and marine life. Those people need to be forewarned as well, and we need to be able to minimize economic losses on the, um, in the shellfish industry by s having a much better understanding of where and when the blooms are going to occur. What we would really love to be able to do in the future is be able to say with a certain kind of uh, precision what the probability of a bloom is in a, ver in a very specific location at the regional level and then even be able to say using forecasting models of circulation where that bloom is going to go. It's here now but it's going to move north or it's going to move south and this is how toxic it is and this is maybe how toxic it's going to get. And If we can have that kind of precision the way that weather forecasters have then we certainly would be protecting humans and, um, and in certain sense mitigating the event. <laughs> Excuse me, Professor Drake? What are you doing in here? Who do you know? Please, Professor. I was just wondering if you could teach me the ways. What ways? Who are you? Who do you know here? Get out. Get out. But, Professor Drake, I've just got to learn the ways of demoic acid so I can play my first game of backseat bingo with the girl of my dreams. I heard you were an expert. Please teach me. At this moment, Dennis reminded Professor Drake of his younger self. Over the past century, demoic acid has been deeply, deeply connected to the warming of our Earth. This global warming has caused tidal waves, 
tsunamis, communism, rising sea levels, hurricanes, and domoic acid poisoning. Do you know what that is, Dennis? Um, it's a kind of starfish that... No, 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 no. Domoic acid is a neurotoxin. There have been domoic acid-related deaths up and down our beautiful coast of California, from Venice to San Luis Obispo, to the Monterey Bay, to just outside Santa Cruz, where birds have been seen attacking people. Birds, Professor Drake? Yes, birds, Dennis. Giant, unpredictable birds just waiting to suck the eyeballs out of you. Animals poisoned by demoic acid have been washing up on our shores. You must do something, Dennis. Protect the planet from demoic acid. Uh, my name is Michelle Berman. I'm the associate curator at the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History in the Department of Vertebrate Zoology. A large portion of my job is grant funded to work on the Marine Mammal Stranding Program and that entails responding to all dead cetaceans, all de dead whale and dolphins between San Luis Obispo, Ventura and including Santa Barbara counties. Presently our research um, on the Marine Mammal Stranding Program includes collection of all types of different data. So we collect data for biotoxins, which one of the biotoxins we look at is domoic acid. And I started working here at the museum in, in 2002. At the same time, we were in the middle of a large-scale die-off of marine mammals and birds from domoic acid. And in 2002, we had approximately 90 dolphins in uh, Southern California die of domoic acid and probably close to 900 sea lions. The effects of domoic acid on dolphins is, in general, it just causes them to seizure. So in 2002, when we had this big die-off, the only thing that we had was a bunch of healthy dead dolphins on the beach. And they had very full stomachs, um, sometimes whole anchovies still in their stomach. These are healthy animals. They should not be dead. They had really healthy uh, blubber thickness, so they were eating well. All of their organs appeared um, clean and healthy, no evidence of gross pathology or even microscopic pathology. That's when we realized that a domoic acid death in a dolphin is very rapid, very acute after ingest ingestion of the toxin. Global warming may have an effect on domoic acid um, but how it will affect domoic acid, I, I can't speculate. Um, there is evidence that we have had domoic acids around since the 40s, but we haven't seen these large-scale die-offs that we've seen recently.